Dancing Barefoot, short but true stories about life in the so-called space age, by Will Wheaton. It is September of 2001, and Star Trek is 35 years old. I am in Las Vegas with thousands of Trekkies from all over the world for an enormous Star Trek convention that is celebrating this milestone. Convention, 9.55 a.m. I'm supposed to start at 10, but I can't find anyone from the convention staff, so I wander all over the hotel, giving all of the appropriate Vulcan and Klingon salutes. I finally find someone from the con who tells me where to go. And then she shows me where I'm supposed to sit and sign autographs. I pass some of my longtime friends. Michael Dorn, Marina Sirtis, Armin Shimmerman. We share handshakes and hugs. It's always great to see them. I also pass some people I only know through these events. Renee Abergenois, some cast members from Deep Space Nine and Voyager, who I know by face, but not by name. As I get closer to my table, I see Kate Mulgrew talking with William Shatner. They share a laugh. My stomach tightens a bit, and I get a little nervous. William Shatner, the one and only Captain James T. Kirk, has treated me like crap as long as I've known him. I first met William Shatner on the set of Star Trek V back in 1988. I was 16 and had been working on Next Generation for two years at the time. We were enjoying some success with our show, and I was very proud of the work I was doing. When I found out that the original series cast would be working next door to us for two months, I was beside myself. Gene Roddenberry was still heavily involved with the production of TNG back then, and he and I were good friends. When I'd pass by his door, it was not uncommon for him to throw an executive out of his office and ask me in for a visit. He offered several times to make introductions, but I always declined. If I was going to meet these legends of science fiction, I was going to do it on my own. For weeks, I tried to get up the nerve to introduce myself. When I would walk from the stage to my dressing room or schoolroom, I would do it slowly, looking at their stage door, hoping to catch a glimpse of Mr. Spock or Dr. McCoy or even the legendary Captain Kirk. The few times they did appear, though, I could never find the courage to approach them. This went on for about six weeks. Word got around our set that I was too chicken to introduce myself to the original series actors, it became something of a joke, and the crew began to give me some good-natured ribbing about my reluctance. They couldn't understand why I was so intimidated by these actors. My face was splashed across the cover of every teen magazine in print. Why was I so intimidated? I was a 16-year-old geek with a chance to meet the big three from Star Trek. You do the math. One afternoon, while I was sitting outside stage nine, talking with Mandy, my costumer, they opened the huge stage door across the way, and I could see right into the set. Standing in the middle of it all was William Shatner. He held a script open like it was a holy text. The way he gestured with his hands, I could tell that he was setting up a shot and discussing it with the camera crew. I waited for the familiar rush of nerves but it didn't come. Seeing him as a director and not as Captain Kirk put me at ease. I knew that this was my moment. I was wearing the gray acting ensign spacesuit. Because it was a jumpsuit, I would tie the sleeves around my waist and wear a lightweight fleece jacket zipped up to cover the embarrassing muscle suit the producers had me wear. We all wore those muscle suits, but I think I was the most traumatized by it. I turned to Mandy and took off my fleece. I asked her to zip up my spacesuit and fasten the collar. If I was going to meet William Shatner, I was going to do it looking as Starfleet regulation as I could. I got a high five from one of the Teamsters as I confidently walked across the street and into the cargo bay of the Enterprise 1701A. It took about eight steps for my confidence to evaporate. Surrounded by extras in Starfleet dress, standing next to a shuttlecraft, William Shatner, director, was immediately transformed into Captain Kirk, intergalactic legend. I was transformed from Will Wheaton, fellow actor and film industry professional, into Will Wheaton, drooling fanboy and Star Trek geek. I looked around. 
I guess I blended in well because nobody had noticed me. I turned to make my escape and bumped into a still photographer who had worked on Next Generation the first season. Hey, Will, what are you doing here? he asked. I swallowed and looked at the stage door. I... Uh, I just, um... came over to, um... look around, uh... and stuff, I said. I shuffled my feet and began to move back toward the safe familiarity of my own spaceship. Well, as long as you're here, you should meet Mr. Shatner. Mr. Shatner? Who's Mr. Shatner? There's no Mr. Shatner here, just Captain Kirk and several Starfleet officers. He turned toward Captain Kirk and he called out, Hey, Bill, come here a second. My heart began to beat rapidly as he turned toward us. Captain Kirk looked right at me. I froze. He gave his book to someone and began to walk in our direction. I involuntarily straightened my back, sucked in my stomach. My muscle suit felt tight and awkward around my arms and chest. Within seconds, he was standing next to us. He was about my height, looked heavier than he did on television. Captain James T. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise said, What can I do for you? Well, Bill, this is Will Wheaton. He's part of the cast of The Next Generation, and he'd like to meet you. Captain Kirk looked at me for a long time. So, you're the kid on that show? He seemed annoyed. My throat and mouth were dry and my palms were sweating. My heart pounded in my ears as I answered, Uh, yes, sir. My name's Will. He continued to look at me. I carefully wiped my hand on the hip of my spacesuit and extended it. Nice to meet you, I said. He didn't take my hand. What is that, your spacesuit? He said and made a sound that was somewhere between a laugh and a cough. Oh, this? Yeah. It's not as cool as yours, but it's what they tell me to wear. I put my hand down. I really wanted to leave. I felt a little lightheaded. Why wouldn't Captain Kirk shake my hand? And why didn't he like my spacesuit? Could he see the fake muscles? Maybe he didn't like the color. I became hyper-aware of the spandex clinging to my body and longed for the comfort and safety of my fleece jacket. Well, he asked. Oh, no. He'd asked me a question and I'd missed it. Excuse me? I replied. I said, what do you do over there? There was a challenge in his voice. Oh, um, well, I'm an acting ensign. And sometimes I pilot the ship. Maybe he'd be impressed that I'd already logged several hours at the helm of the Enterprise D, all before the age of 16. Well, I'd never let a kid come onto my bridge, he said, and walked away. Captain James Tiberius Kirk of the Starship Enterprise 1701 and Enterprise 1701A, the only person in Starfleet to ever defeat the Kobayashi Maru, the man behind the Corbomite maneuver, the man who took the Enterprise to the Genesis planet to return Spock's Katra, the man who I had admired since I was eight years old, was immediately transformed into William fucking Shatner. I bit my lip and turned to say goodbye to the still photographer who had made the introduction, but he had vanished as well. I walked back to my own stage with my head down, avoiding eye contact the entire way. When I got to the entrance, I found Mandy and asked her to unzip my costume so I could put my fleece back on. Did you get to meet William Shatner? Yeah. I didn't want to let on that I was upset. What's wrong? She asked as she handed me my fleece jacket. Well, I hesitated. Saying it out loud would make it real. He was a dick to me. Her eyes widened and she gasped. What? Why? What happened? I fought back tears and recounted our introduction. What an asshole, she said. Oh, Will, I'm so sorry. I nodded my head and she gave me a hug. I drew a deep breath, shrugged my shoulders and walked back to my trailer where I sat down and cried. I had spent weeks getting up the courage to meet this man. 
and in less than five minutes, he had insulted and humiliated me. He had reduced me from peer to peon. I'd worn my stupid costume, thinking that it would matter to him, and he'd made fun of it. Fifteen minutes later, an assistant director knocked on my door and told me that they were ready for me on the set. I stood up, wiped my face off. I walked to the makeup trailer, taking great pains to look at the ground, the walls, the sky, anything that would keep my head turned away from the Star Trek V stage. I sat in the chair, and my makeup artist, Jana, began to touch me up. I heard about what Shatner did to you, she said. Fuck him. He's a jerk, and he has been for years. He's probably just jealous that you're younger, better looking, and more famous than he is. I sighed. I didn't want him to be a jerk. And I didn't think that he was jealous of anything. I was certain that I'd done something wrong. I walked into the stage and took my seat on the bridge of the Enterprise D next to Brent Spiner. I heard about Shatner, Brent said. Jesus Christ, was this on the news or something? Yeah, I said. You know he wears a toupee, right? I giggled. <laughs> no, I didn't know that. Yep, he's balder than old Baldy up there. He tossed a gold thumb over his shoulder at Patrick. I giggled some more as the stored-up adrenaline coursed through my veins. Boy, <laughs> that's pretty bald. Yep, Brent put his hands up on his console. The first AD said, this will be picture. Action. Patrick entered from his ready room and walked to the captain's chair. Mr. Crusher, take us out of orbit and lay in a course for the Ramatis system. Warp six. Aye, sir. My fingers danced over the con. Course laid in, sir. Make it so, Mr. Crusher. The camera creaked back on the dolly track as the Enterprise D went to warp speed. Cut! The actors can relax for about ten minutes. Gene Roddenberry would like you to call his office, Will. Okay. I changed direction and walked to the stage phone. My heart began to beat hard in my chest. Had Gene heard, too? William fucking Shatner had known Gene for over twenty years. If Gene knew that I'd upset him, maybe Gene would be upset at me, too. I passed the craft service table. Michael Dorn and Jonathan Frakes were pouring cups of coffee. To hell with him, W, Jonathan said. I love it when he calls me W. To hell with who, Michael asked. Shatner's shit all over the teen idol, Jonathan told him. Beneath his latex Klingon forehead, Michael rolled his eyes. You want me to kick his ass, Will? No, uh, that's okay. Thanks, though, I said. I've got your back, man, Michael said. I dialed Gene's office and told his secretary that I was returning Gene's call. He's expecting your call. Just a second, Will. I understand that you had some words with Bill Shatner today. Oh, my God. Was he going to be mad at me? Uh, yeah, I said. Will, Bill Shatner is an ass. I am proud to have you on my show. Don't you ever forget that. Did Gene just call William fucking Shatner an ass? And then say he was proud of me? Come by my office soon, okay? Okay. See you then, he hung up. I began to feel better. Though a childhood hero had kicked me in the nuts, a bunch of people who I cared about and respected had all made efforts to put it in perspective. I felt loved and protected. The next day when I got to work, there was an envelope on my dressing room table. I dropped my backpack and tore it open. Inside, there was a single 3 by 8 note card. The Paramount Pictures logo was stamped into the top in blue, and William Shatner was stamped into the bottom in gold. There was a message typed on the card, which said, Dear Will, you are a fine young actor, and I would be honored to have you on my bridge any day. Sincerely yours, Bill. The phone rang. Will, it's Jean. Good morning, Jean, I said. I spoke with Bill Shatner yesterday, and he should be dropping a note off for you today. You are a fine young actor, he said. See you later. I couldn't believe it. Gene Roddenberry, creator of Star Trek and the Great Bird of the Galaxy, had called William fucking Shatner, James T. Kirk, and director of Star Trek V, 
and asked him to apologize to me, Will Wheaton, 16-year-old acting ensign and drooling fanboy. Of all the wonderful gifts Jean gave me across the years, that is one of the most fondly remembered.